since I do a lot of sports here on the Donnie Sports 17 Network, it's only a here at the Hall of State. They have an exhibit to honor the legends that have played their sport here in this state. And, it, and they teamed up with the Texas Sports Hall of Fame and and no telling what do we have outside or inside but th I, have a, I have a good feeling about this exhibit because I think it's time to not only show off all the great sports legends that's played in the state and there's been plenty of them the Texas Sports Legends event and hopefully it may have some some well known folks to uh have a meet and greet and ask people about it. That'll be an excellent Donnie Sport football show. Stories from the Gridiron City. Anyway, we'll check it out. Let's see what, what's <laughs> Oh boy. This is one, of, like I mentioned, this is one of the reasons why I come to the State Fair this year. Because when I heard this is being put together, I couldn't be more enthused. I mean, Texas is dripping with sports history, and you're looking at recent edition of it, the San Antonio Spurs winning the NBA title this year, beating the uh, Miami Heat, one more time, beating LeBron James in Miami Heat. Did I say that the Spurs uh, beat LeBron James in, the, uh, in Miami Heat? <laughs> looking at the guy that has been there for one, two, three, four, five NBA titles. Tim Duncan, guy never ages. It's unbelievable. And this is the guy that orchestrates all those titles. And he's definitely an uh, NBA coaching legend now, definitely. And Greg Popovich, or as they call him, Pop. <laughs> He, he, I tell you, he, he's a good coach. He's a good coach, and uh, five, tell you what, five NBA titles, that says a lot. Now, of course, since we're here in Dallas, <laughs> I have to show you this. Opening night, NBA 2014. You're looking at the teams, they'll go head to head. And these two teams battled and a thrilling game seven first round match with the Spurs actually putting away the Dallas Mavericks. But let's not forget, 2011, uh, Mavericks won the title. <laughs> and you look at the, the guy, that's his jersey right there. And like I said, uh, other teams, we're gonna go upstairs, there's a lot more stuff. But uh, Natasha Lumpkin won a gold medal for gymnastics. And you know, also we have hockey here in Dallas. There's the Dallas Stars, Jamie Benn. Canadian hockey hero, the Olympics this past year. Got a go to beat Team USA and help win the gold medal for Canada. And that's his jersey and that's <laughs> the skates that he wears. And that's uh, donated uh, Natasha Lincoln Lumpkin who uh, won titles in the Olympics. That's her outfit and that's the medals that she won. Lovely jewelry there. And there he is. The man. The Diggler. The man from Germany. They took a chance on him in 1999. A lot of people say, gee, be crazy to have a you know, waste of draft pick on a German player that we don't know? Thank goodness they took the chance because he's been a great ambassador for basketball here in Dallas. And he, I think he has three more years in him. Enjoy what he does. Because what he does is good stuff. Dirk Nowitzki, ladies and gentlemen. As you know, track and field's big in Texas. Carl Lewis has won many gold medals, many gold medals, and that Michael Carter, 
who was a big uh, discus, uh, big d discus guy for and shot put guy for the uh, for SMU, and later became a uh, later became a uh, stellar player for the 49ers, and Michael Johnson. Oh yes, ran track at Baylor, and he was burning all kinds of records and winning all kinds of medals in the Olympics as well. I can see track and field, big, 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 big sport in Texas. And so is gymnastics. And uh, I think in Texas and gymnastics, there's two people you might want to might want to put your finger on. Bella and Martha Paroli, they coached a lot of up and coming gymnastics that later became gold medal Olympic, st Olympic stars. And speaking of Olympic stars, the grace, the smile, what can you say? Mary Lou Red. I mean, 1994 Olympics, it was her time, it was her year. And how can you get that electric smile of hers? Wow. And you look at all the <laughs> all the clothing that they wore. Let me stand back and give you a nice good look. Of course we all remember that nice looking jacket there. And if you do well in the Olympics, they give you a box of Wheaties to grace your picture on it. Like her. And like her. <laughs> and this is the Golden shoe that Michael Johnson wore in the Olympic Games in Atlanta. And it's a college uh, Olympic uh, outfit. And Carl Lewis had a book as well. Huh. <laughs> and let me swing it over. Boxing. Texas is all over it when it comes to boxing. I think one person, Texas, George Foreman. You like him for his boxing ability? You like them for the fact that it makes, he makes uh, grills that make non-cooking people chefs. <laughs> there he is, George Ford right there, he's silent. There he is, and George came out of retirement, he did a pretty good job in my opinion. And Curtis Coates, let's not forget him. Many people talk about George Foreman, let's not forget Curtis Coates, he's from Dallas. He also won some titles. First World Boxing Championship, undisputed. And he defended that uh, title many times over. And we gotta go way, way back. Jack Johnson. And Jack Johnson was your old, 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 old school boxer. And there's a lot of pictures of when he was doing that. Very good. Gotta lay the groundwork for a bunch of other things in the future. Of course, we, when you're talking about hockey, of course, we saw the future of the Dallas Stars with Jamie Benn. But when it comes to hockey in Dallas, it all begins with Mo, Mike Madonna. And when the Stars came to Dallas uh, back in 94, Mike Madonna was the rock star the front man for the Dallas Stars. I mean, uh, if it wasn't for him, he'd still be trying to figure out how to play the sport. <laughs> but with Mike Madonna and the Dallas Stars having success, and Mike Madonna talk about a career of careers. I mean, look at him. I mean, he won a Stanley Cup, helped win a Stanley Cup. He helped the USA to win gold medals in, in team play. Also, uh, as I say, he's also inducted to the United States Hockey Hall of Fame and also the Hockey Hall of Fame. And those are showing highlights of what he does and it's always a thrill to see him score goals and to see him uh, go to the record books and all kinds of fun stuff this guy's done. Wow, deadly backhand. A screamer, right pass, <laughs> deep moves. <laughs> and this is his uh, 
This is his little section of uh, jerseys and, and uh, hockey sticks and pucks that he used. But if Dirk Nowitzki was uh, the ambassador for basketball in Dallas, Mike was the ambassador for hockey here in Dallas. And this, this place here, oh, we'll get to the other side. The other side's real good, but we're gonna whip through this. You know, Dallas was a big, is out, big and always will be a big soccer town. And two stars in the state of Texas will help uh, also ambassador for the sport. You know, you know about Mia Hamm and all what she did in the Olympics and her uh, soccer accomplishments by way she's from Wichita Falls, just so you know. Let's not forget Kyle Roach Jr. Yes. Remember the Dallas Tornadoes? Yes. <laughs> Saw a few of the games back when I was a kid. And Kyle Roach Jr., who, by the way, son of well-known football great Kyle Roach Sr., kind of brought soccer into the forefront in Dallas, and as where well it's America and all that. And you see all the jerseys and what he wore and a couple of soccer balls. And of course, like I said, if you do well in a sport, you get a Wheaties box. <laughs> there you are. Let's go. <laughs> ah, basketball. <laughs> And then I'm um, looking. This is a little comp collection of a bunch of players that played the sport here in Texas. Rolando Blackman, when the Dallas Mavericks first had a success, Rolando Blackman was there and he was doing work. And then you see Cheryl Schroot, who played for Texas Tech, also played for the Houston Comets, and yeah. Houston Comets had like three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back titles. Of course, that franchise is no longer around, but a lot of history there. And Akeem Agreen Olajuwon played for the Houston Rockets for many years, but let's not forget he also played for the Houston Cougars and led the Houston Cougars to three straight Final Four appearances. They were on the doorstep of winning a uh, Final Four back in 19... I'm gonna say 1983. They're just like a breath away from winning the Final Four. And then North Carolina State kind of killed that dream a little bit. You know that heartbreaker loss there. And let's not uh, <laughs> go through that. That was a killer, killer time if you're a basketball fan in the Lone Star State. And oh, they're showing off uh, <laughs> highlights there as well. Let's march over here and there's much more stuff with other well-known basketball players to play in Texas. A lot to watch, Clyde Drexel, let's not forget him, the Clyde the Drive, Randall Blackman, David Robinson, the Admiral. The Admiral, let's not forget him. He was on some good San Antonio Spurs teams. And Cheryl Scroops, let's not forget her. There she is. And oh boy. <laughs> We're almost running out. We got enough battery space here, but look, let me back up here. You know, a lot of football players have played in the state of Texas, and not necessarily all of them Dallas Cowboys. I mentioned Michael Carter. That's Michael Carter. That's his SMU uniform. Well, oh, there he is. But Damian Thomason, some thrilling years at TCU, and then he moved on. Had some thrilling years with the San Diego Chargers. That's his helmet and that's his uh, jersey. I'm gonna swing around over here. <laughs> Highland Park High School. I'm gonna back up a little bit here. Now I will see Highland Park, as I call Highland Park and Richardson on the final game of the high school season. But you look at some of the uh, leather jackets and sweaters that people wore way back when. Kind of classic, kind of vintage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, what's that high school? Yes. Our 40-year reunion is this 
this weekend. Oh my! I know. Wow! I know. Wow! I'm old. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Hey, I had to ask you, when you went to high school, were you a cheerleader or student or were you playing in band or what were you? I was just a regular kid. You're just a student? <laughs> I was in the ROTC. Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's some army time in. That's right. There you go. Know. Yeah. That's right. All right. Thumbs up to you. Uh-huh. Thanks. Oh, we're into the football section, and, and I mentioned Dallas Cowboys. Uh, first ever draft pick by the Dallas Cowboys. And the cornerstone of the Doomsday defense, Bob Lee. And before Michael Irvin and before Des Bryant, he, Drew Pearson, was the original number 88. And that's his jersey. Let me swing around here. <laughs> And I mentioned. It actually was painted. And look at this. The triplets, the cornerstone of the Dallas Cowboys in the 90s. Emmett Smith, Troy Aikman, Michael Irvin. The memories of the 90s when the Cowboys were rocking. <laughs> and the Super Bowls, oh, oh, we're coming. Let me swing around the corner here and. Of course, there's more. Mel Rithro, safety for the Dallas Cowboys, and Randy Wright, the monster, well, master. It wasn't a monster, it was a master. <laughs> and there was some Heisman Trophy uh, uh, folks who won some Heisman Trophies here. Tim Brown played for uh, the Oakland Raiders. And also Notre Dame, but he played his high school ball, Woodrow Wilson. And then Eric Dickerson, the Pony Express, him and Craig James, the Mustangs in the 90s, and the sets they had there. Billy Sims. He was a Texas kid, where he played his college ball in Oklahoma. And then right here, Earl Campbell. Those amazing runs they had, rushing, pounding defenders. There's no other running back like them. I mean, many, many running backs had that slashing style. He, he bruised people and made you feel it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to go ahead and say it. This is a well put together exhibit they got here. Look at it, Joe Green, Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> and, you know, way back when, the Dallas Cowboys, this is the Cowboy Booster Club jacket. Nice looking jacket there, had the Dallas Cowboys original emblem on it. And you can see a lot of the groundwork of the Dallas Cowboys in the early 60s. Tom Landry and uh, Tex Rep. I think that they're using this to dig up the ground for the uh, Texas Stadium. And of course, the first real good quarterback the Cowboys ever had, Don, Dandy Don Meredith. There, there you are. About a few years ago, they had a exhibit at the same spot. It was all about Tom Landry. You know, about the, well, not so much the coach, but also the guy, the father. Will put together, will put together a exhibit there way back when. And of course, there he is. Oh boy. My vocals are about to go out. <laughs> the guy that brought the first Super Bowl title to North Texas. The first quarterback. Actually, he brought another one as well. Roger Staubach. There he goes, number 12. Roger the Dodger, the way he scrambles and all that fun stuff. <clears throat> now, I mentioned that they did an exhibit here all about Tom Landry. When you think of Landry, you think of the hat. <laughs> yes. Of course, we covered all the sports. We haven't covered baseball. And this state is dripping with baseball history. Whether it's collegiate or pro, and the University of Texas, and I think they won more 
College World Series titles in any other team in Texas. And you look at that, Roger Clements. And Roger's, oh, <laughs> he was a fireballer pitcher. You look at his jersey, that's his shoes. Of course, he was a pitcher for the Boston Red Sox when he started. And then, speaking of fireball, Nolan Ryan. And he was born in Texas, but his best years were with the Houston Astros when he played for the Astros. And that, in my opinion, is the nicest looking jersey you ever want to see. <laughs> and then Nolan Ryan's cap. And of course, we'll talk about the Texas Rangers later on, but Rangers came to town in 1972 from Washington. That's one of the original jerseys of the Rangers right there. And of course, Fort Worth Cats. That's the minor league team. That, that team has some history as well. Now let me swing you over to this wall and it has all the history behind it. There's Roger Clements, Jim Sunberg, behind the plate, had some great years with the Texas Rangers. Bobby Bragan, had a lot of history with the uh, Fort Worth Cats. And of course, let's move over here, Ernie Banks. <laughs> Went to high school at Booker T. Washington, and he became a stellar performer for the Chicago Cubs. He's the guy that said, hey, let's play too. And Nolan Ryan played for the Astros. He also played for the Texas Rangers. And there's, if you want to look at the Texas Rangers and Nolan Ryan, there's one event where Bo Jackson hit him in, hit him in the mouth. And, but he kept on pitching. You gotta like that guy. About that guy. <laughs> he is right there. And there's some action highlights of Jim Sunberg in action. <laughs> oh boy. You know the hey, let's oh let's let's back up a little bit. Golf. Lots of golf history in Texas. Babe Dickerson. First Lady, and she's done a lot of things, but golf is her claim to fame. Lee Trevino, ooh, what a guy. Don January, Tom Kite, Bit. You know, when you think of golf in the Metroplex, there's two names that pretty much puts it all together. Ben Hogan, and his name is all over the Colonial Golf Club in Fort Worth, and Byron Nelson, whose name races a golf tournament here in Dallas. And when it comes to golf, Ben Hogan, Byron Nelson are two of the best. Oh, let's have a Ben Crenshaw. We gotta, we gotta give a lot of love. <laughs> and Tom Kite as well. We gotta give a lot of love to all the uh, golfing greats who made this uh, state of Texas great. And my three, my, <sighs> I'm not tired here. But, but let me back up. I'm going to show you something. One, two, three, four, five Super Bowl titles the Dallas Cowboys have won. Could there be a six in the near future? Who knows? <laughs> Heisman Trophies? This state's won their first year. Okay, Tim Brown, I mentioned him, that's his. Davey O'Brien, one of the best quarterbacks TCU has ever had. And the first Texan to win the Heisman, Western Mississippi. He was the first one, first Texan, and Dope Walker. Oh, right by, right by it. And there's a little list of all the Heisman Trophy winners that came from Texas. Look at here. Davey O'Brien, Doug Walker, John David Crow, Earl Campbell, Billy Sims, by the Cooks, Texas, that's where he's from. Tim, Tim Brown, Andre Ware. Oh, goodness. Yeah, let's we'll start all the way down. Brian Walker, Crow, Campbell, Billy Sims, Tim Brown, Andre Ware, Ty Dittmer. From San Antonio, Ricky Williams. Robert Griffith, RG3, we saw him back though, a couple years ago on his NFL day. And the recent one, 
Johnny Manziel, Johnny Football, who, by the way, is now a wide receiver for the Cleveland Browns. I don't know if his career path led him to that. <laughs>